Tom. Welcome back, everybody. Very happy to introduce our next guest. Why the hall not should we introduce Jim Donahue? Jim, welcome to the program. Hey, How are you? Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Author of the book, Why the Hall Not, which is... Co-author, I Co-author, I should Absolutely. say. I wanted to give you more credit than... No, you don't there. deserve He's it. He's not here. You're here. That's all that matters. <laughs> hey, good. But you've had a very interesting relationship for... A, had a very interesting relationship for a very long time with Richie Ashburn, who, you know, is a national treasure in this city. Absolutely. Can you just kind of give us the gist of the book and, and where all this stuff began? Absolutely. Uh, I was uh, eight years old. And I have a picture to prove it. There it is. If you think Jim's lying, he's not. Here's the proof. And I was a much better looking kid than I am an adult, by the way. But <laughs> yes. eight years old, I got my first autograph at, with Richie Ashburn at Connie Mike Stadium. Yes. That's actually an autograph book from Woolworths uh, <laughs> and signed with a pencil, of all things. So I, did, <laughs> wow. I didn't know enough to have a Sharpie in those days. Yes. Uh, got my first autograph, and that was it. 30-second encounter, uh, just a star ball player signing for a kid. Uh, didn't meet Richie again. Took him along on family outings. To, uh, we went on family picnics. Richie was there on the radio. Uh, picnics, on trips the beach. to the shore, on the beach, the whole yep. nine yards, Richie and Harry. Uh, 34 years later, I met Richie at a card show. I was in line, and uh, the talk went to Wyatt's and Richie in the Hall of Fame. I got to the front of the line, and being the... Uh, Whatever that I am, I mentioned to Rich, how would you feel if your fans started a grassroots campaign? I had no money and no resources, <laughs> knew no one in the Phillies, no one at the Hall Perfect. of Fame. Really didn't know Richie. I was the poster boy for failure, basically. Yeah. So it could do nothing but succeed as far as I was concerned. Richie stopped uh, signing, looked at me for a second and said, you look like a reasonably intelligent fellow. You must have better time, uh, things to waste your time on. Nice. Classic Richie, right? Uh, pretty much. He said, you'll be beating a dead horse, and, uh, and we were off. Now, how, how, you, you, you knew him. You had talked to him, obviously, during that, that stretch. Oh, we became friends over the course of time. How yeah. much did it bother him, affect him, that he wasn't in the Hall of Fame? Richie, and one thing I always wanted to clarify about my campaign, my campaign generated almost 200,000 signatures over four years. That was pre-internet. Uh, but my campaign was to overturn a rule that took Richie off the Hall of Fame ballot. It was never, ever okay. to get Richie in the Hall of Fame. Richie was a Hall of Famer. No one had more hits during the decade of the 50s, 50s. than Richie Ashburn. Yeah. It was, it, it's pretty standard what Richie did. He was a Hall of Fame player. The fact that this rule change took place and Richie was no longer eligible, that was the thing I took offense to and most of his fans. Uh, I'll only say that Richie's belief was the day he went in the Hall of Fame was one of the happiest days of his life. To think that I had some little iota piece of doing something to make that happen, I mean, as a fan, how could I not feel great about that? And my campaign was basically bumper stickers, why the hall not bumper stickers, and petitions. I had no money, no way to advertise, and I didn't want to do advertising. I wanted fans to be involved in this. I wanted the, the Hall of Fame to see how his fans felt about Richie. Now, speaking of that magical day in 1995, not only was Richie there, so was Mike Schmidt, but you're also here in the, uh, in the background as well, right there. Well, that's not me. That's me taking the pictures. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that, I'm just taking the photographs. That guy looks just like you. Is that your brother? <laughs> uh, that's, that's, uh, that's my handsomer brother, obviously. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you got Yogi in there, too. Pretty but, much, yeah. I mean, that day, obviously, you were a part of it. I mean, you talk about how magical it, it was for him. I mean, was it a side of him that you hadn't seen up to that point? Uh, Richie was more emotional than I have ever seen. Yeah. And uh, I, I actually met him for lunch two days before we left, and uh, I went to his home in Armour, and he was sitting there uh, with a yellow legal pad taking notes for his speech. Mm -hmm. Now, he waited over 20 years to go in the Hall of Fame, and three days before, he's actually That's compiling Richard. a speech. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we talked about it, and I said, why don't you just wing it? Your fans would like to see you just speak from your heart. And that's basically what happened. And to this day, I mean, uh, to, to, to see the emotion there. I mean, my dad died uh, six months before that went in, mm. and it was a, we had a trilogy sort of at Connie Mac Stadium. My dad, Richie, myself, I would sit out in left field, in left center field, watch Richie set up for uh, the batter and everything, and, uh, and he was a part of my life. So when my dad died, it was one thing. When Richie finally passed, on, ironically enough, my 25th wedding anniversary, that kind of... Just two years later, that, so. That, that put it all... And he lived the last two years of his life as a Hall of Famer. So like I said, to think that I had anything to do with that. And my analogy always was that the, I was like the kid walking past the oil refinery with a lit match. The thing was waiting to explode. Yeah. I just happened to drop the match, that's yeah. all. Sam? Well, he got. Uh, the, 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 I remember the speech. He, his mother was there, and, then, <gasps> and I, I remember it like it was yesterday. How choked up he got when he looked down at her. And it, I mean, if you were there, I'm, I'm tearing up just talking about it again. It was one of those moments to witness. You, it was so raw and so uh, just, you know, just gushing with all all the super, yeah, superlatives you can have. Just looking down at her and saying, you know, I forget it what he even said, but 
he got emotional. She had just a big smile on her face. The fact that she even got up there at whatever age she was was just an amazing... It was hot, is what I remember. Was, well, you, and you're not... This is not just about, you know, the quest to get Richie in. You're raising money as well with this. Yeah, we raised money. Uh, the bumper stickers went to ALS and Richie's name. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I'm trying to do with this book, uh, I could be perfectly honest, uh, I can't even spell author. You know, so my thing is this book fell in my lap, basically. It, it became a gift from above. I want to see this book do something positive. So any book signings I do get out and do, I want to, I want to see some of the proceeds go back to the community organizations. The first one I want to do is August 3rd. It's for the uh, Media Youth Center. Uh, that's actually Brent Hill, Sonny Hill's son, runs that. He's executive director. They're in desperate need of help for uh, uniforms for the kids for basketball to do improvements. And Richie would be, be smiling down on this. If anything good came out of this, I mean, if it is Richie Ashburn, why the whole not, then why not help somebody But the one else? thing that's so amazing is the, the, the career that he had after playing. I mean, the broadcasting yeah. career is, is probably even more memorable for a lot of people than the playing career. Rob, I'll, I'll give you a story. You'll, you'll love this, especially as a guy who does talk radio. One of my many lives in this town, in 97, I did the pre and post game on the Phillies. Right. <laughs> that night, I was on the air the night Richie died, right. and uh, Scott Graham and Bill Conlon came on with me. We used to take calls for like a half an hour. Sure. That's what I would do just by myself. We were on for four hours, and I'm telling you, there was no time mm -hmm. when the switchboard was not jammed. That was the night I really understood Richie, because I didn't grow up here. I didn't really get it. I didn't understand right. the mm -hmm. impact he had in the city. That night That's I got it. And of course, we had the special well, section the next I wanna, day. I want everybody to know where they can get this book, Dick. So yeah, let, let, no, let's, let's tell people where you can out in Delaware County, out in the Absolutely. area. Yeah, stop by any of the Barnes and Nobles, Border Stores. We're going to have them in at the stadium this weekend. Saturday, and, though, you're going to be at Sam's Saloon. Uh, so, uh, we're going to do a thing for Sam's. Uh, book signings are boring. This is not going to be boring. Sam's <laughs> Saloon in Glen Olden. 610-534-8300. My buddy Tony Basilis is going to get up singing. I'm going to come out of musical retirement. It's, I'm going to embarrass future generations of my family. All right. I, I, got, go. a, I got a lot. Speaking of embarrassing, I hope I got through this hour that you embarrassing did great. myself. Right. It was great. a lot of fun. I do think, it again. I don't man. think Bark there's any need bring that out. What's that other guy's name? Bark See, I was the one who did that Skype thing. I was the one who cut it off. But I want to thank everybody for from Dan Roach, a producer, to James Conley, that everybody downstairs, our cameramen, and you guys as well. It was a blast coming up. We got Wells, Fargo, and it's going to be a lot of fun, guys. Everybody